we are here inside of Blender, and I'd like to show you how to create a very simple collision between two objects. So we just have the uh, default scene here, and just to make things really nice and simple, I'm just going to click on the camera, holding down the shift key, click on the light, press X, and then delete. So the only thing we have in this scene is the cube. So what I'm thinking I'd like to create here is um, have a cube, we're gonna elevate it in the vertical direction and then drop it onto a plane. So let's add that plane. So up under the add menu just here, add mesh plane. So the planes come in, now it's, uh, it's still selected. So while it's still selected, I'm going to press the S key for scale, move my mouse out, and then just click when I'm happy with the size. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's now move the cube in the Z direction. So I'm clicking on the cube. I'm going to press the G key, which is the shortcut key for the move tool. So you can see I can easily move it around like so. If I then press the Z key, that will confine our movement to the vertical direction. And when I'm happy with the position, I will just click my mouse button to commit that. Very nice. One, uh, one other nice little trick to know if you don't know, guys, if you hold down your middle mouse button, you can easily move around your scene like so to change the orientation. The orientation of the view, that is, not your objects. Okay, so we are ready to add some physics to this just now, guys. So I'm going to bring up this panel just here, which is the timeline. If I tap the spacebar, I want you to see this playhead is playing through, but note that these objects aren't moving. So objects do not move by default within Blender, as you would expect. Okay. So all we have to do to trigger that, guys, tap the space bar to play that, tap the space bar to stop. There are also a little bunch of buttons just in here you can use as well. Okay, so my cube is selected. Over here inside of the uh, properties panel, just down here, this little icon here, the dot with the near complete ring running around it, that's your physics properties. If we click on that, a bunch of crazy things that we can add to our cube, let's this time add rigid body. Let's just run with the default settings. So I'm not changing anything just yet. Tap in the spacebar, let's see what happens. And tell the spacebar to stop. So you could see, if I just drag the playhead back to the start just there, the cube just falls and it just falls straight through the plane as if the plane wasn't even there. So clearly we need to add some physics to the plane. So let's select the plane. Let's come over to rigid body. And again, let's run with the defaults and let's see what happens. Tap in the spacebar. Okay, now both objects just fall into infinite space. So clearly there's one last setting we need to apply to the plane. So with it still selected, over here in rigid body, we are looking for this first option just here, type. Let's change it from active to passive. Okay, playheads at the start, let's tap our spacebar, and fantastic. That's exactly what we want. So the cube falls, strikes the plane, uh, jumps around a little bit and then stops. So that's already looking great, but I just want to introduce you to a couple of other quick things. And again, very simple introduction there, guys. So we'll uh, wrap this up pretty shortly. So I'm thinking I would like this to bounce around a little bit. So let's uh, select the cube. Down here in the physics property, physics properties, if I scroll down a little further to the surface response section, there's a bouncing slider just there. I'm going to drag that all the way up to one. Let's tap our spacebar and see what happens. Okay. Basically exactly what happened before. So let's drag that bounciness on the cube back down to zero. Let's click on the plane, drag its bounciness all the way up to one. Drag the playhead back to the start and okay. It's still kind of the same, what's going on? The big thing to take away from this guys, if you want to introduce bounciness into your scene, you need to add it to both objects. So the two objects that are colliding have some bounciness on both of them. So the plane's already at one, if I grab the cube and drag its bounciness up to one, let's see what we get. Okay, that's bouncing like crazy. Looks awesome, but maybe that's a little bit too much bounciness. So with the cube selected, I might just drag that down to something like 0.5 roughly, and let's see what we get there. Okay, so cool, we've got some nice bounciness, but it's not going crazy like it was a second ago. Uh, one other thing you can play with, guys, is the orientation of your objects relative to each other. So the cube is selected. If I tap the R key, That'll temporarily give me the uh, rotate tool. I'll just click to commit that and let's play that now and see what we get. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. So a little bit of bounciness, a little bit of rotation on their object. Very cool. Okay, guys, clearly there's about a thousand different things you can actually set when it comes to uh, collisions in terms of settings. 
but I just wanted to keep this very nice and simple. So that's your simple introduction to collisions inside of Blender. I hope it's given you some cool ideas and helped you out. Catch you later.